It's good to be with you. Um, good day to everyone, and um, welcome to the Kendall Hunt uh, webinar to talk about uh, thriving in high school and beyond. Uh, my name is uh, Shane Shope. As uh, Ryan alluded to, I have a uh, considerable amount of time in the K-12 setting. Uh, we've worked uh, together on numerous uh, occasions, but uh, mostly our uh, work is centered around trying to help high school kids get ready for college and career readiness. So I'll uh, turn it over to my colleague, and he can introduce himself. Uh, J.R. Roush here. And uh, as Ryan said, a lot of uh, the two of us spent a lot of time in K-12 and higher ed. Uh, I spent some time in the uh, elementary world teaching and also uh, teaching, high, uh, teaching science. Uh, spent some time as an elementary, middle school, and high school principal and dean of a college and also a faculty in education uh, right now as well. And uh, one of the things that uh, kind of the genesis or one of the things that kind of helped precipitate this was uh, when I was a high school principal, I noticed so many times uh, that when my seniors would graduate, uh, we would find them back on our doorstep before December going, I went off to college and, and either picked the wrong college, chose the wrong major, maybe lost my way, um, also may have picked the wrong career, needed help with a resume, got themselves in some financial trouble. And so, you know, I started thinking about this whole process of, um, you know, college success courses may be too late. And so Shane and I had a conversation about offering a pilot uh, in the high school where he was superintendent. And uh, so we opened it up to everyone and, and we made a lot of assumptions when we started this uh, the project that the kids knew what a syllabus was or kids knew how to apply for X or Y. And so, that began the process and, and also with our co-authors, uh, Dr. Thompson and Dr. Cusio, uh, in, in this work of thriving in high school and beyond and helping uh, students become career and college ready. And Ryan did a good job of uh, framing kind of the history behind um, the amount of kids that participate in, in programs uh, for career and college readiness and, and, and our, our quote, career and college ready when they, they leave leave high school and, and exit out the doors. And so one of the things that, um, that I'd like to talk about is, is some of the, uh, the challenges that schools are facing in preparing students for college and career readiness. So one of your assignments here is to start out with, start thinking about, jot down or, or uh, send a question, a response to that. What are the challenges schools are facing in preparing students for college and career readiness? Um, I kind of tip my hand a little bit to this and the fact that so many of the students, um, when, when they chose a major and, and we had the conversation, one young man sh shared that said, I want to be an engineer. And so we asked the question, well, what kind? And he didn't really realize that there were multiple uh, engineering paths. And so understanding the course path, things like that, uh, finding strengths and weaknesses. And, and again, so many kids, um, maybe not knowing what's available out there for them as well uh, in preparing for their career and college opportunities. Um, you know, the bottom line there says, it's like dropping them off deep in the forest and telling them to find their way without a map or a compass. And so our work is geared toward trying to help kids have that map uh, students have that map to help them navigate their path. And so when we look at like the content of the materials uh, that we uh, typically use within our own programs, uh, we talked about, you know, what you see here as far as the table of contents. Um, we really focused on making sure the kids were prepared for not only uh, gaining uh, college experience and understanding how to navigate that system. But in most cases, we also looked at middle schoolers coming up into high school and how we can prepare them as well to get ready for high school. So you can see a number of the topics there that we felt were really important as a former high school teacher and JR being a former high school principal. We know that these are things that are not always provided to students when they're coming in through our doors. So the two areas that we're really going to talk about and emphasize with you this morning, or this afternoon, wherever you're at, we're going to look at financial literacy as one piece, and then a big part of what we do is with career exploration, preparation, and readiness. But you can see uh, just from the list there that we cover a lot of material, and we think there are very important aspects of generating the capacity for these students to be successful, not only 
uh, just for college, but also transitioning into the military or the workplace. So we're really excited about uh, discussing that this to these topics with you today. Shane, if I could also add in, as a, as a principal, I remember the difficulty of trying to schedule, you know, how do you address the financial literacy component, the career exploration and readiness. And so uh, the material that we've put together here is, is a nice piece where you can, you know, we were like, how, how in the world do we put financial literacy in during this period? And we address career, explor career exploration. And there aren't very many materials in our searches. We found that uh, many teachers said, I, I don't have any curriculum that can help me. Sure, as a teacher, I'll, I'll help try to teach financial literacy or career exploration, but the materials were just not out there. So as a principal, this would have been a fantastic tool for me to kind of help prepare material and have things ready for teachers and as a, a teacher to have these strategies and things laid out for me uh, when I had to, to, you know, teach these variety of subjects as well. So, so now we're going to look at the first piece, you know, the first topic, and it just deals with college and career ready. So a couple of the uh, important things that we focus on when we work with our students uh, is we do things like interest inventories, and uh, you know, we talk about um, the four pillars from Dr. Thompson, uh, abilities, interests, values, and needs. And we try to really focus in on that. And so um, one thing we always have the students do is a career interest inventory to try to find out, do I wanna move away from here? Is you know, what I'm looking for available where I live? If I don't wanna move away, what opportunities are there? So we, we try to, encourage students to peel back the layers of the onion to see, you know, what's going on here. We talk about co-ops and internships. And so actually explain what those means at some time, uh, you know, I give them the example of like a substitute teacher, many times substitute teacher that gives me an idea kind of to see what kind of skills they have and it leads into a job to hire full time. And many of our students, I said, take advantage of those internships that may lead to some jobs. And we actually worked with the grant uh, where we were uh, helping a bank out with career readiness and hooking kids up with internships that eventually led to jobs for them in the banking industry and business. And so we really try to purposely connect those internships and, and co-ops and, and opportunities. Um, we also brought in some biz local businesses to talk about, we had a, a fence company and he said, most of you think about, well, I don't, I don't necessarily want to build fence. I'm not in construction. But the owner of the company talked about, I need IT specialists. I need salespeople. I need business experts. I need folks who are really good with Excel and marketing. And so a lot of, a lot of the students we work with had no idea that those opportunities um, exist. And, and so some of, the, some of the success stories I'd like to share with you, a couple of them, we, we had a, a young lady who had basically uh, had been emancipated. She was on her own, um, no parents, uh, you know, available in her life. And so uh, her testimonial back to us was, but for this program, I would have never known how to navigate the pathway to, to my major and, and college and get accepted. And so she was, she was, you know, able to earn scholarships and we were able to help her walk through her career choice and career path. And she's, she's one of our many successes. Um, kind of a funny story, I went after we had done one of these career workshops, because we talk about soft skills and employability skills. And so I was at a restaurant and uh, I noticed the young lady pointed and she said, I want that table. So she walked up to me and she said, hey, thanks. My tips and income have gone up since I worked with you guys you know, I've really, I've really implemented a lot of the skills and strategies in my job. And she said, my earning potential has grown so much. She says, I, I really appreciate some of the skills and strategies just by learning to interact with people and using my soft skills and, and interpersonal skills. And so there's a lot of layers to this, un, you know, unintentional good things that happen out of this that we hadn't even really thought about. And so a lot of positive success counselors thanking us, you know, it, it actually acts kind of as a helpmate for them to help guide students and free up some of their advising time as well. And, and to add to that, one of the things that's great about the, the resource, the book itself, is it provides a lot of online materials that really provide a, a deeper dive, depending on what type of challenges you have scheduling this type of uh, curriculum to fit in with the students. 
Um, the book's written on an eighth grade level, reading level. So we found that even uh, up through middle school, this is really an effective piece to kind of get this information out to students. I know we've had so many conversations over the years um, that JR and I have worked with each other for so long that we always look at uh, students, especially where we work in rural Southern Ohio, that when they leave the school, um, I'm not really sure that we prepare them 100% to deal with issues like diversity and, and the, the financial piece, which we'll get into here in a second, how to really tackle those things. Um, because I think uh, JR's analogy about, you know, sticking them out in the forest and then telling them to find their way home without a map, I think that's what we've often done with students. But I think what we've tried to create here is a way to roadmap and provide that information to them so that they can find their way. And that's a big part of why we, we really uh, think this is so important for high school students when they leave, is that they have the basis to at least ask or know where to ask the right questions. Um, just, just another anecdotal thing, uh, Shane and I were able to, to do some research with this and some surveys. We, we put together a Likert scale for students to kind of provide feedback for us, gave some extended responses as well. Most of them, their extended responses had to do with our dad jokes, but that's not available in the book. You can just get that through the webinar if you'd like to hear dad jokes. But at any rate, um, on the Likert scale, it, it was amazing, the feedback and getting teenagers to respond positively. Uh, I think about 500 students through the grant we've worked with. The lowest on a five point scale, the lowest response we've had back average was a 4.5 or somewhere around there, 4.6 is 4.7. As far as a positive response, uh, uh, five being the highest, students really appreciating new information, being unaware, presented uh, information in a little different format so they could understand the personal uh, connection they could make with this. And so um, just wanted to make sure everybody understood that this is, this is receiving a lot of positive feedback from students as a very user-friendly tool as well. So the next topic that we, we said we'd wanted to kind of talk about deals with financial literacy. And um, the book has a really good, uh, I think a thorough look at not only just basic financial uh, information with regard to things like credit history, credit scores, uh, but it looks at uh, financing, you know, education. We look at things like the FAFSA, we look at student loans, and we talk about interest rate. Um, and those are a lot of things, and you can see some of the examples come from the, that are here presented on the book about looking at um, some an anecdotal type things that the authors have put together to kind of give a connection between reality and some of the context of the of the work that's in the book and then you can see some of the more examples we even talk about the irs and tax systems and so forth um, we look at income expenses savings and so forth all these things that what we found is shockingly is that when we do the presentations with the content from the book is the feedback we get from the students is we want more of that and which is shocking in a way because I can't think of financial literacy being all that ex exciting of a topic. But what we find out is, is those are the things that they are knowing, they know that they're going to be dealing with once they get out of high school. We talk about credit cards a good bit because one of the questions we'll ask students, um, and a lot of the information again comes out of the materials presented here, is have you got one? And do you know what's happening with the, the payments that you're making. And so we go through a long discussion about that. We talk about their credit scores and how in the future that's gonna affect the types of loans that they get, the interest rates that are gonna be uh, provided to them and really to be thinking about long-term how this is gonna affect their quality of life. So we, we spend a lot of time uh, emphasizing the do's and the don'ts and that's something that uh, we put in there as well. But uh, we want kids to have to be armed with information that way that they don't get caught in that vicious cycle because uh, most of us would agree that we didn't have that information about credit cards and we understood that, you know, we could make that minimum payment after we charged it up. But over time, that's all we were doing. We were really never reducing the principal. So we talk about why it's important to be a smart shopper and understanding that uh, all these things impact our quality of life as we get older. 
No, and, and again, just to reiterate that the way the book is set up, and many of our counselors that, that are using the book right now uh, talk about how, how much ease they have in, in scheduling things because of the content. Think about as a principal or as a teacher or a director, um, you can use this as a semester long course. When I was a principal, we had senior seminar that might run half the year, a junior seminar a half the year, where we might have freshmen taking a financial literacy course. So this, um, this book was kind of a Swiss army knife for, for a lot of our counselors. And, and we, get, we get a lot of compliments regarding the versati versatility of the book and how they're able to use it for so many different groups in their building. We had an eighth grade uh, career readiness uh, teacher who used it for transitional work into high school. And so th there's just, there's so many opportunities uh, that you can use with the book, whether it's financial literacy or, or career readiness, dependent upon the age of your student. So one of the things that um, we've been able to uh, put together are a number of supporting programs. We do a lot of work with uh, some of the gear ups in our region, uh, specifically gear up Kentucky and gear up Ohio. And then uh, we've also done a, a number of just independent works with uh, area high schools and middle schools uh, to promote the information, the program that we've been using for quite some time. Um, we, we like the fact that what we can do is tailor and customize uh, the particular um, online uh, resources. And that's one of the things that we'll get into a little bit more of a discussion later on about how Kendall Hunt is a great job supporting us in customizing the book itself. Because uh, Ryan can, can speak to this and so can Paul, Paul Carty or anybody else within the organization. But that's one of the, the, the big positives I see with, with uh, working with Kendall Hunt. Uh, but also we look at, you know, what we can provide students and teachers as, as far as like supporting materials for the book itself. Uh, one other add on to that is Ohio has added an alternative graduation path, the uh, Ohio uh, Readiness Seal. And so this book actually meets and we, we spoke with uh, the Department of Higher Education, Department of Education, uh, Ohio means interns, Ohio means jobs, and uh, Ohio is a state that doesn't adopt a text statewide, but there is a, there's a verbal endorsement that says that all of the content here meets those criteria for the, the readiness seal uh, that is as in proposal for, for the state of Ohio. So again, one, one more part of being a versatile resource for schools. So hopefully you're coming up with some questions while we're transitioning from one section to another, and we'll try to get to those at the end. So again, one of the things that we kind of highlighted on is the customization and the supporting materials. Not only does uh, Kendall Hunt provide the uh, text, but there are a lot of uh, supporting materials that are tailored uh, to help um, any part of the curriculum that that are listed in the back in the table of contents. So here's just one example of that when we look at some of the online surveys that we use with some of our, um, our schools. And then we do um, a number of different activities that are engaging. Uh, we do some group activities as well. But you know, I think it, at this time, we'd probably turn it over and let the publisher talk a little bit about the customization aspect of the uh, program. A uh, real quick note before we do, and, and one thing I want to mention to kind of prime your thoughts on that, what, what kind of customization, we want you to be thinking about questions to ask Kendall Hunt for customization. When I was a high school principal, uh, we'll just say about a decade ago, uh, I was paying about $21, believe it or not, for our, our school agendas that would have our customized um, school rules and, and all the code of conduct and all that kind of stuff. And um, there would always be a package for inspirational materials that maybe didn't have a whole lot of, of teeth or content, or it was kind of one of those post this, you know, little inspirational saying up or let's talk about it. But um, I think to the point now, which is a, a transitional talking point is, if I would have had this, what Kendall Hunt can do, and they'll talk a little bit about that with even in his example as a, a, a school agenda, $21 for that back then versus what can be offered now. 
they have so many uh, abilities and capacities to individualize this for you. But I want you to start thinking about what you pay for your school agendas and what use you get out of those and maybe what Kendall Hunt can ask for you as well to help you with this material. So we'll turn it on over to Ryan and or all the rest of the folks from Kendall Hunt. Ryan, are you there? I'm here, JR, Shane. Uh, it's Paul. Hey, Paul. Okay, great. Uh, first of all, we all want to hear your dad joke. Uh, <laughs> Later. <laughs> But, but the purpose of, of my joining in today is, is to kind of reiterate uh, what you guys have said. Our goal is to provide states, uh, any individual school, with exactly what materials they need to make both the course and their students successful. Um, open your minds. It can, be, it can be pretty much anything. Um, if you... If you want to add a customized agenda, that's fine. If you want, if you want to put in uh, school-specific photographs, you want to put your school mascot, uh, you want to have a, a letter from the local 4-H, um, if you want to put in uh, local letters from your business partners, um, anything that makes the product more uh, specific, more meaningful uh, to your faculty and to your students, um, we can do it. So, so at this point, Paul, would, would you want to wait and see if folks have questions posted or do you want to keep moving on or maybe it would be a good time to address some of those questions? What do you think? I, I think we did have a question of, of uh, Spanish translation uh, the answer is yes, absolutely. Great. That, that was on our questions of, of things, and you answered it, so thank you. Anytime. Does so, any, do any of the participants have any other questions that they would, uh, either they're curious about or they'd like us to answer? You can please use the chat function for that as well. None at this time, but um, I'll, I'll stop you, JR and Shane, if they come up. Okay, great, thank you. So one of the things that um, we've been able to uh, adapt and develop is using a lot of Kendall Hunt resources to put together what we feel like is a uh, program that covers both um, a digital standpoint, and I think that's one of the upsides to the, to the book itself, not only can you do hard copies, but you can also do the digital uh, electronic version. And with that are a lot of supporting materials, as we mentioned earlier, that are all hyperlinked. Um, we use Prezi uh, to kind of to help deliver the information with each chapter unit. And we divide those up into uh, four, four modules that kind of help teachers or whoever is going to use the material um, to deliver that to students. So one of the things we wanted to also bring up is that Kendall Hunt is sponsoring a student success symposium um, in Atlanta, Georgia on October 18th through the 20th. Uh, and we'll have the uh, link here in a second for you to look at, but it's one other way that you can uh, gain access to individuals who are uh, far, far greater experts in the field than we are, um, Dr. Joe Caseo and Dr. Aaron Thompson and uh, a host of others. But uh, we would invite you to consider uh, visiting us in Atlanta. And um, here's the information that you might wanna look at. Just a quick note, um, our emails are listed here uh, above the question and comments. If you wanna contact us directly, JR and I would be more than happy to uh, reach out to you. Uh, also, we'd like to take a quick moment to thank Ryan Brown and Paul Carty uh, Paul, Paul is the Director of Publishing Partnerships. We want to thank him for the opportunity to speak with you today. And Ryan's uh, help in coordinating all of the webinar information, we certainly appreciate that as well. Um, again, the information link below is where you can register for the Student Success Symposium. 
and um, I'll turn it over to JR for some final thoughts. Yeah, I, I want to take this time to kind of circle back around from where we started with the genesis of this. And, and some of you may be wondering, what happened to those kids in that original, uh, you know, kind of group or cohort that you started with? And so Shane and I took the opportunity a couple years after we had worked with this group of kids and we tracked them all down. And 100% of those kids were either had finished an associate's degree were in the military or were transitioning on or had continued on at a four-year university, 100% of those kids. And so we were able to, to kind of ask them why, you know, what did you notice? And they said, we didn't get distracted by all these other, uh, you know, things that some of the people who hadn't been through this program and, and some of these kids were first generation students. They, they knew not to sign up for loans that, that they didn't need to or, or whatever. And um, they, knew how to, they knew what a registrar was. Think about that in terms of how many of your students may not, have, that, that term is a complete, uh, you know, un, unrelatable term, a registrar or the, the financial aid and signing up, what's a loan, what's a grant. And so those are terms that a lot of us may take for granted. And so many of the students said, I wasn't distracted by all these other things that a lot of my roommates or friends or people that hadn't gone through this program. And so we were able to focus more on the academic part of our degree instead of, uh, you know, working through all the minutia of signing this, don't signing this, meeting deadlines, um, you know, signing up for a parking pass, do I have a car? We, had, we address all those things as far as the kids having awareness when their, their feet you know, hit the campus, or when they start talking about their career, some of those skills, just like I shared with you about the waitress, and she was going on to college, but she, she took those skills that we talked about from the book and from our workshop and used them in her workplace and noticed an immediate impact. And so whether you're teaching financial literacy, career readiness, soft skills, diversity, it's, it's bringing an awareness to all those components that are available in the book. And, and again, I take a step back from when I was a principal, if I would have had a resource like this to meet all those diverse needs, um, particularly I was in a small rural school where I had very few resources or people to tap to say, I need you to do this. And so we had so many teachers who had so many different responsibilities that if I would have had something that was research-based, packaged like this, where we could choose what we need. And again, Paul can address this too. If you look at the book and say, I don't need all those chapters. I may only need 10 of them or six of them or whatever. Paul, if you want to jump in and address that, I, I think that's still accurate that if you want to pull, you know, three fourths of the book out or something and you don't need all of it, that's, that's okay as well. Yeah, that, that's true. And you can also add um, other pieces of curriculum that you personally develop that would make the program even stronger. So you can go either way. You can add or you can subtract. Whatever, whatever makes the end result uh, more successful for you is perfectly fine. Yeah. So maybe what that would look like, Paul, is someone may have an enrichment period for all of their students, and they may have a specific curriculum or program that they need to pair with this. So, so that might be something. Or again, I mentioned the agenda where you say, hey, listen, this, I want my kids to have a digital um, digital uh, handbook and so because most of the kids don't want to carry around the old spiral agendas and, and a lot of schools now are going to one-to-one -one technology with Chromebooks this is another way to address that because you can have the online version and kids could have their agenda and the text and all that available in the classroom so you don't have to keep up with those as well so again a, a lot of different ways you can use this material and, you know, and I think this is a good time just to kind of circle back and look at, you know, what we, we've identified as being a, a, an issue with, with a lot of schools. Um, I think when we first started really delving into this, we, we found that some of the research told us that just about 8% of, of high schoolers really had any type of career readiness training. And that was something that was, um, it, it's perplexing when you think about it because we, we push so hard and there's so many uh, agendas within each state that that's an area that seems to always be pushed as far as getting kids ready to go to college. And I, you know, sometimes it gets overlooked about the career piece, which I think is just as important. Um, there are plenty of uh, vocations out there that make an, ex an exceptional living, 
Um, but again, I think it goes back to we expect kids to know all this information or we expect it to, them to learn it on their own as they go. And I think that's where we lose kids when they go into these systems is they lose their way pretty quickly because nobody's there really to guide them. Uh, and I can think back to our own experiences. Um, my parents did not go to college. So when I went, I was really kind of, uh, you know, I was not prepared to deal with some of the things that JR has mentioned already. You know, what is a registrar's office? You know, uh, I can go back and tell you that the schools I went to, I wasn't even sure what, you know, the importance of a GPA is. And I think that's where we, you know, I, I, I see some people saying that, and I've had colleagues say this in the past about, you know, well, how long do we hold their hand through, you know, getting through college? And I'm like, well, if we want them to graduate, we want them to be successful, then we don't just turn them loose. We actually give them the book, the map to show them how to get there. Um, and I think colleges are finding that more of a, an issue of wanting high schools to really prepare their students to be ready to go once they get there on campus and know exactly, you know, where they need to go and how to navigate that stuff. Um, you know, I've got two girls in college right now, and the first person they call when they've got a question is me because I've been there. Um, and I think that's what every student needs. They need to have some way of gaining that information. Uh, and if it's not from their parents, you know, then high schools and schools in general can provide that. And I think this is one outstanding tool that can provide that, that information. Yeah. So, so Ryan, any other questions that have popped up so far or? Yeah. Um, how do you work with teachers and CBAs around teaching these concepts outside of their curricular area? You know, we've uh, we worked with a, a group of teachers down in Kentucky not too long ago. And part of what we've we really encourage them to do is look for opportunities within the curriculum. And that takes a little bit of creativity, but we've encouraged them to think about what are some of the careers in that particular content area that really are something that kids could uh, gain more information from them? I mean, whether that's teaching, um, you know, I think that's, that's kind of the, the look. If you're not going to be able to implement it as a separate course, then can you have those conversations with your teaching staff on how they can infuse this type of information within the work? Um, we spend a lot of time talking about soft skills and, I, and sometimes folks will say, well, what does that mean? And we're talking about just simple uh, understandings about how you communicate with folks. How are you, uh, are you courteous? Uh, we talk to students a lot about, you know, you're going to need that letter of recommendation down the line. You don't want to wait two days before or the day before to get that letter. Um, you're going to want to build those relationships uh, with your teachers so that they're going to write a good letter of recommendation. So I think there's just a number of different creative ways uh, in many ways that the book can be customized is thinking about having those discussions in, in content areas and at grade levels about how can we implement some of these, these pieces in here. Uh, if you think of financial literacy off the top of your head, that's, that to me wouldn't be that difficult if you've got an economics course or even some of your mathematics courses about how you can implement that type of, of learning within that, that content area. I'm, I'm going to give a really <coughs> unusual uh, example here, but that's not out of the ordinary for me, is it, Shane? So, <laughs> so one of the times that we were working in the county here where we're at, I, I went through a, a training called Leadership Brown. So it's Basically, it was a, a county. They had a leadership team where they took businesses, and through the college where I work, they, they try to create an awareness in the community of what's there. And the, one of the examples, when we start talking about career pathways, we actually took a field trip, all of the, the folks um, in the leadership team, and we went to our local uh, dump. The waste management company is called Rumpke, and so they said, we can't find enough people with biology and, and chemistry degrees. And I kind of looked like, why would you need a biology degree or a chemistry degree? Well, they actually hire two biologists to, to manage and take care of the wildlife around there and scare the birds off the dump and, and keep them. In, and so they also have water, water control and they, they harvest the gas from the dump to help power the local town. And so in my head, I kind of have this epiphany. So, one, one thing Shane and I've done with Ohio Gear Up and Kentucky Gear Up is 
we've kind of trained the faculty and, and, and to get them to kind of think out of the box. And we do community asset mapping with them so that they understand to not look at, at their area or region as a deficit model, to look at it as an asset and what's there. So with this book and, and also there, there has to be an awareness or awakening as what is there instead of what isn't there for students to say, if I want to get a degree in um, marine biology, and this was the greatest story, we go around and ask the kids, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? And so one young man said, I want to be a marine biologist. And I said, oh, well, where are you going to move to? He said, no disrespect, sir. He said, um, this is actually the home for Ohio's fish, fish, fish hatchery, and they hire marine biologists here. And so I was humbled very quickly by a 17, 18 year old because they'd already done their research and found out that even in Ohio with no ocean, they could be a marine biologist in their small rural community. So I, I think that's important too, is just having that awareness. And please, whoever asked the question, if you could um, maybe send a message as to whether we answered or if you need further clarification, if that would be okay. And Ryan, if there's any other questions, while maybe while the clear, you know, the clarifying or uh, response. Yeah, we had a, another question. Um, is is it an extra class, or do you integrate it within the class? So you, I know you kind of already answered that, which is great. Um, another question on the price of the package. That's yours, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, if, if you were to purchase the uh, product standalone. Um, it's uh, $30 uh, for each student. If you get more than 10, you get a 20% discount. Uh, the ebook is, is half the cost in 15. Now that ebook platform is uh, run with uh, a software called Vital Source. Vital Source is the largest producer of ebooks in the world. It'll work on any device known to man. Students can highlight, they can take notes in the margins. Um, it's also an audiobook. So if you, uh, if their preferred learning style is auditory, um, it worked, obviously it'll work well. And then uh, depending on the customization, uh, the price can go up or down and also volume. Thank you, Paul. You're welcome. Ryan, any other questions? Not at this time. Um, just what's your favorite dad joke? <laughs> uh, okay. Bear walks into a restaurant and the waiter says, can I take your order? Bear says, yeah, I'd like a cheeseburger and a Coke. And the waiter says, hey, what's with the big paws? He says, oh, these, I was born with them. <laughs> I actually thought the internet froze <laughs> during your pause. I sold it well. Thank you. I hope I hope I've I've conveyed our product as well as the bear joke and the dad joke. So. <laughs>